10 P's of business. So I started learning about business when I was at school and we talked about the four P's of marketing. So this is quite a similar theme, but today business has got so much more complicated. Products, services have to be much more sophisticated than they ever have been before. Or 10 P's that I'm going to go through. One of them is problem. And we're going to discuss each one in turn. So 10 of these all start with P and it's a similar theme. So problem, product, positioning, people, packaging, promotion, price, psychology, purchase and planet. And we're going to go through each of them in turn. So the first one is problem. So why start a business? So business is to solve meaningful problems profitably. And problem is the first thing you need to solve as a business. The whole purpose of a business is solving problems. So what problems do you want to solve when you're starting your business? So there are many pain points to look for. So the first thing is who can you help? What problems can you solve? So to find these problems, they're everywhere. Once you start looking out for them, as a business owner and entrepreneur, your job is to go out into the world and solve problems. And the more problems there are, the more opportunities there are to start your own business or to to add on to additional businesses. So look for pain points. Where are problems? And it's also looking for where you can give people pleasure. So give businesses about solving people's pain points or giving them massive pleasure. So go out into the world and start listening for problems. So you'll hear about it. Maybe your friends are talking about it. Maybe your friends are saying how frustrated they are with what certain things. Or online, if you go on to communities on Facebook, social media, LinkedIn, you'll start hearing people complain about certain things. And this is, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, this is where you can add value to people. And this is where you can start finding out business opportunities business ideas and testing them and seeing if there is validation in these problems in setting up your own business so start looking at speak to your friends ask ask your friends what problems are they facing at the moment what's what's their frustrations what are their challenges what problems are they having with technology or with the everyday life you can go out even looking at newspapers reading newspapers going through what what are people reporting on where are their issues what what is frustrating people and you you as an entrepreneur you as a business owner go out and solve these problems and that's where people will pay you money to solve their problems to take away their pain or to give massive pleasure and there are the bigger problems as well so you might look at the sustainability goals the 17 goals that the un came out with for 2030 so these are huge problems and these are certain things like quality education gender equality life on land life on water in water these are huge problems that humanity the world is facing and as a business owner you can go and say actually i can solve it, these problems even if it's a small part even if it's helping in a little little way to solve these problems. So that's number one, and probably the most important. So the bigger problems you can solve, the more people will pay you money. The more people you help, the higher you're gonna get paid. The higher the more magnitude, the bigger problems you're gonna solve, the bigger you're gonna the bigger people the bigger pay packet you're gonna get from people. So number one is problems. So number two is product. So product is how you're going to solve these problems. So we talked before about product, a problem, and your product is just a, a way to package up these this idea to solve these problems. So it's a solution to these problems. So it's a benefit. So what benefit can you provide? And this benefit for the problems that you're solving is going to be your product. So it's going to be a product or service. So this could be a piece of machinery that you've invented. This may be, this may be a service that you can offer. It may be a gadget that you've created that makes something simpler, easier, 
cheaper than the current offering. So you can look at one or two products that are already on the market and say, actually, I can make this better. I can make this cheaper. I can do this more efficient, faster, or give it, give, make it more fun and easier. Or maybe you pick two or three products that are on the market already and combine them to form one ultimate product. Think of the iPhone. So Steve Jobs created the you had a phone that you could dial and speak to someone. You had the internet. And then you could also, and you also had music on in one device that was, and it was also a global positioning system as well. You could have maps and connected to the internet. So essentially, all these services or this technology was available. What the iPhone did was essentially package it up to one product, and that would solve someone's in a, a simpler way. So, what benefit is a customer getting as well? So, and also, what is the result? So to boil it down really, really simply, it's think of the product could be someone has a headache. This is the problem. Someone has a headache. Your product is the paracetamol, the drugs that has been created that you swallow that paracetamol and you don't have a headache anymore. You could be thirsty and you drink a bottle of water. Your bottle of water could be the product. And then they're not thirsty anymore. So it's a product problem, your prob- your product, and then that solves that problem. And that's number two, product. So number three is positioning. So essentially, as a business, you need to position yourself in the market. So what is your niche? Where are you solving this problem? So once you understand your problem, once you've got your product, you want to position yourself in a niche. So where are you an expert? Where are have you authority to solve these problems so a doctor has qualifications a business coach may have testimonials a scientist may have won a nobel prize so these are all positions to in in the market and then once you have a product and your position you want to understand are you going to be are you going to position yourself at the high end like if we're thinking about watch so rolex would be a position themselves as a high-end brand you pay thousands of pounds for a rolex watch and it does the same job as a casio watch for 10 pounds it's just positioned differently it's just brand so when you see someone wearing a rolex watch you might be that person might have been successful in the past and they've done a business deal and they can have that pay more money for for a watch a pc and a mac they both essentially are computers but a mac might be position to a creative person rather than a PC might be someone who's a bit more formal, more corporate. So decide on your business. Where are you gonna where are you gonna position your your brand, your 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 business? And then dominate that that position. So Domino's was a good example Domino's is a good example for being speedy. So they competed against Pizza Hut because they Domino's essentially offered pizza in 30 minutes. So Volvo would be an example of safety. So essentially you want to focus on a niche and where you can focus on that mark, where you can dominate that market. Essentially you want to create your own niche subcategory and that's where you can kind of dominate rather than trying to compete with other people. If you create your own business, your own category, then you're going to be, it's what they call the blue ocean strategy. You're not going to be competing in the the kind of bloody red ocean where other with other people you have this whole market this whole blue ocean to yourself where you've created your own category so that's positioning where you position your business so number four is people so what this is adding on to the people you're going to aim towards so it's, it's two things so the people you're going to aim towards we talked before about your kind of positioning and the the demographics or psychographics so the demographics would be kind of age gender the how much they're getting paid whereas the psychographics is their lifestyle their their beliefs it's a bit more deep and meaningful the psychographics and it's actually your maybe it's it's two people who are 30 and getting paid the same amount of money one person might really believe in environmental causes and whereas someone else might not be might be really into cars maybe they're not so concerned about 
the environment. And so on one position, it's your people who you're selling to. On the other hand, it's the your people are your team. Who are you going to be? Who's going to be in your team working for you? So it's about having specialized knowledge. So when your team is growing or when you move on from just being one person to forming a team, you want to start focusing on specialist skills. So if you're a business owner and you're working on your own, you tend to do all the tasks. You do everything. You do everything from the designing the products to the operations to actually giving getting the product in the customer's hand to the sales to, to try and in the, and the promotion and the marketing. So you're doing everything. When your business grows, you start to specialize in certain areas. And this is called division of labor. And Adam Smith, who wrote a book called Wealth of Nations in 1750, essentially what started the whole capitalism. Capitalism. So the, what this huge growth we've seen in the last 200 years of capitalism, it started off with a division of labor, with a pin factory where each person had a specialist task. So one person would do one task. Uh, maybe that would be melting the pins. The other person would be next to them putting the pins back together and the next person might be putting a clasp on this pin and essentially each person doing their own specialist task was much much more efficient than one person making a pin from start to finish and this can be in your business so business chart would be you want to have someone in focusing on sales and marketing you want to have another person in operations trying to make that a, a delightful experience for the customer so f- kind of a user experience who might be building websites might be building apps might be building the product and delivering that product then you might have another person focusing on the finance where are you going to be getting your money from what's the cash flow situation like do you need funding do you need to chase people to pay invoices that's another section and then another person would be your like ceo so chief operating officer and essentially that would be the kind of the front man of the the band so to speak the the kind of the team so each the that person might be the one who is on camera the one who's maybe writes a writing the book about the the the, the area they're focusing on. maybe that's the one who's in the media this is the kind of the steve jobs person that's the kind of the key person of influence, as Daniel Priestley calls it. So that's people. So yeah, it's it's not just the the people you're selling to or your customers, your clients. It's also the people in your team. So your kind of the band of specialist skills. So the the sales and marketing, the operations, the finance, the key person of influence. So that's the next. That's number four. People. Number five is packaging. So how do you package up your product? And this is not just your physical packaging, how you how you put your packaging together. It's also how you create um, a value proposition. And we'll go into this. Um, so think of, think of a supermarket. You've maybe a can of a can of soup. It's not just the soup itself. You need to have a, a packaging that's going to be attractive to the the customer. They're going to walk past in the aisle and say, "Ah, oh, that looks interesting." The kind of the branding as well, the the bright bold colours, and it's also going to explain about the ingredients and what's in what's what's in the what's in the the soup, and it's telling a story as well. So to explain about what your what your brand stands for and what what it will bring for you if you buy this product so it's also so it's not just about packaging up your product it's also about packaging up your value offers how much value can you give so you'll listen to this product this is um, a bonus section in in one of my products about money this is just an additional value to get you to give you even more value for your money so this is another way to get to increase satisfaction, to to give more than you get, than the the customer gets for their money. So McDonald's are, are kings of this. So McDonald's are really good at packaging up their products to offer more so value. About a value proposition. What's what's your value proposition? What are you offering the customer? And it's got to be way way more, or it's got to be perceived way way more than the person paying the money. So you've got to package up your product. So when the customer pays that money they're they're feeling like they're getting a bargain they're they're feeling like almost that you've been 
put out you've almost been they're getting much more value than they're actually paying for so mcdonald's are great at this so think of it rather than just buying a hamburger if you go in if you just bought a hamburger that might be two or three pounds and that's that would be fine but what mcdonald's do really well is they create a meal so you, you don't just buy a hamburger like most people would go in and buy a meal because you get a burger you get fries and you get a drink and that together that feels like it's much more valuable you but then you end up paying more you you end up saying actually handing over five pounds but somehow you feel it's more valuable because it's a meal rather than just a hamburger so the perceived value is much more by packaging up this your product so yeah, mcdonald's are great at this and even even more value is a happy meal so you have not just a meal you don't just get a burger fries and a drink but you also get a toy and you get this yeah, this kind of toy that keeps the the child entertained and you don't just get a toy you get the packaging itself has puzzles and games and interesting facts on it and it when you you pay three pounds for a value a happy meal and you feel like you're getting value you feel like you're getting much more back than just the, the money you're handing over so that's think start thinking about how how are you going to package up your product how are you going to put things together that make things feel much more the perceived value is much higher than you're actually paying for so the customer has to feel valued and it feels like you're getting much more than you're getting than you're actually paying for so packaging so number six is promotion so this is advertising so how are you gonna it's not just about creating a product and people are going to knock down your door for it you have to go out into the world and promote what you're selling or what your your product you've got to go out and explain to the world why people will benefit from using your product you've got to go out and explain how you solve their problems and you also have to create your market so it's not about just creating a product and then selling it but you also have to create and a, a problem as well so part of, part of promotion is actually getting the person to understand that they have a problem people might not even realize they have a problem they might not they might go into the world and not realize that they've got a problem and it's you as a business owner to have to explain that you have you have a, a problem that needs solving so an example of this is a spyware so people might not even realize that there was a, there was problems with your viruses but until you told them about there's hey your computer might be getting hacked you might not have invested in spyware you might not have been invested in this product and yeah there was a, a really good book about this actually essentially creating your own market and he uses the example of spyware essentially some of the smartest people in in technology essentially create these viruses just so they can have spyware that will go and create and pre prevent your computer from getting effect infected by this this virus arguably that's pretty unethical but that's there was a book and this example explaining about this much much better than i'm explaining here but yeah essentially you've got to create your own market you've got to find your people and explain what the benefits of buying your product are so you, this promotion might also be about running adverts. You might be putting adverts in social media. It might be about ad, adverts in traditional media, the paper, newspapers, going on other people's podcasts to promote your, your product or service. It might be offering a special offer or a discount or every year you run promotions. You might say for this month we're going to reduce our our product by in half because to get more people on board or you might offer a special promotion where you, you include free a, f a freebie in it to in increase more people into your offer you might offer a promotion for free you might offer um, many pre people offer a free promotion to get them to get their email address and then you can start promoting other things to them so you start thinking about how you're going to start promoting your your products and service. It's 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 one of the hardest things to do to promote yourself. You, many people sit and build their product, and it, the the job is only half done when you've built your product. It's about telling people about it, and that's half the battle. After promotion, the next one is price. So this is the cost of your product. So 
what are people going to be paying for your product how how much are they going to be paying are you going to be pricing it high are you going to be pricing it low you've got to work out your costs you've got to work out your expenses so how much is the raw materials of your product how much is it going to be to actually make how much do you need to sell to make money are you going to look at economies of scale where you have very tight margins you have very small margins between the expenses and what you sell for but because you sell loads of them you can charge a reasonable price or are you going to have are you going to offer a high price where you only need to sell a few where you sell a few products and or you can make and then you pass on those that cost to the consumer so the higher your expenses the more you can pass on to your cons- your consumer or your customer and you need to understand profit as well so profit is the cost of your raw materials your expenses and also how much essentially the person's paying so so number eight is psychology and this is super important it's become really relevant the 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 last few years it's about mindset and mindset is everything so what you think and is is everything really so think about we talk about selling so how to sell requires psychology what you what is the mind of the consumer what are they going through what if you can get inside of your customer and understand their problems understand their frustrations and their fears and you can when you if you understand your customer more then you can solve their problems even more even easier so if you, it's getting inside your customer's head understanding their problems and you only, you can only do this by speaking to your customer asking them what problems are you facing what what challenges are you facing and then when you understand the customer's problem then you can go into go out into the world create a problem uh, go out into the world and create a, a solution to their problems solving these these problems so understanding where they're coming from so it's so easy to get this wrong but if you can get this right it's it's like a gold mine it's it's the psychology of um the customer is king and to to understand this is is so important so that's the psychology so number nine is purchase and this is getting to buy getting them actually a customer to buy your product so someone has to buy to be a business someone actually has to pay for your product so we mentioned before it's not just about creating a product it's actually solving someone's problem so someone's actually got to reach into their pocket get out their wallet put out their card and pay money for this and that's the hardest battle getting people to pay having enough trust in your product that you can solve their problem that they will pay their hard-earned money and today it's it's never been so noisy especially social media has never been crammed so crowded so noisy and who do you trust the the amount of trust is quite low with many people and it's about building up that trust making sure that you know that you can solve their problem it's about being consistent and taking yeah making making sure that you actually do solve their problem so that's purchasing so actually making a sale or making actually getting someone to pay their money to a problem that you can solve and then number 10 is planet so planet is yeah number 10 so we're in a finite world we've got a climate crisis so being a company that does good is becoming more important and consumers are becoming much more aware of this so information is can spread so much faster than ever before and with this it's more and more important to be a business that does good or even at least think about not doing bad not destroying the planet and information can spread so quickly that it's so easy to lose a reputation quicker than ever so it's think of it treat everyone like your grandma with a thousand twitter followers because one tweet can can destroy your all your hard hard work so it's it's not something you can fake either you must be authentic so it's about thinking about the planet think about bigger the bigger part than just you and 
the sustainable development goals actually focus on a problem that's bigger than you and that will mean that it's not just about you it's about the bigger world and it's yes a problem bigger than you that you can solve or bigger than the the problem that you're trying to solve for your customer because it gives you a kind of a unity with your customer that you're fighting for something bigger than yourself so so money tips plant a tree for every book bought so we the the, the goal that we're focusing on is life life on land so we're really focusing on planting a tree and for every book bought and five trees for each coaching package bought. So if you listen to this, you've you've been part of that, and you've this means that you have contributed to the the planet, and you can feel good that you've done your part of your money has gone to planting a tree that will increase biodiversity and reduce the uh, CO two emissions in or absorb some of the CO two emissions that have been released. So this has been the ten. P's of business and just quickly go through them again. So just to summarize, so number one is problems. So where are their pain points? Where can you solve problems? Number two is product. So essentially you've got to package up your your product to solve this to be a solution to this problem. So you've got to this product's got to be a solution to the problem. What benefit is the customer getting? And what result are you going to get? But then number three is positioning. So this is also having a niche. Where are you expert? Where are you where do you have your authority? And also position yourself in the market. So are you high end? Are you low end? What what kind of position are you going to kind of face? What where are you going to where are you going to position yourself? Number four is people. So this is people who your customers are, who your clients are. And also who your team is. So where are you going to bring in? Who are you going to bring in? And the best people to bring in are that complement your own, that essentially that are, have skills that you don't have or that you're not very good at. So there's no point bringing in someone that's also very good at the the skills, the expertise that you have. If you're going to build a team, you've got to have someone that's going to be complementary, com- complementary to you. So someone who's going to be if you're very good at sales and marketing then maybe you bring on someone who's very technical or if you're very good at you know building websites maybe you need to and you're you're quite an introvert you love coding maybe you need to be bring on someone who's very extrovert who's very good at kind of going out into the world and speaking to people so number five is packaging so not just your packaging of your product but also how you package your value offer so how me how can you offer as much value as possible Number six is promotion. This is both advertising, so going through social media, traditional media, newspapers, put, putting leaflets through people's doors. But it's also also how many kind of offering special offers on these promotions. So maybe this is a discount a certain number of times a year or having kind of a, a big promotion that you can push, have a deadline, have these short sprints that you can kind of focus on. And that's promotion. So number number seven is price. So the cost of your products. You've got to work out the expense. How much? What's the? How much does it cost for your raw materials? And then add on your time and your labour, and then to make a profit. So you've got to be focusing on your profit. So what's what's the purpose of a business? Is to solve problems profitably. So that's price. Then number eight is psychology, which is super important. So mindset. So it's not just about your own mindset. So maybe this is productivity, actually focusing on getting work done. It's also focusing on your customer psychology. So what are their pain points? Where are they coming from? Can you get inside their head to really solve the problem? And that's psychology. Number nine is purchase. So they've got to, someone's got to actually buy your product and service. So you've actually got to get offer enough value, offer enough conviction uh, conviction and to convince someone to purchase your product and that's purchase and number 10 is planet so this has become more and more popular so we're in a finite world we're producing more and more rubbish around the world there's a landfill amount of landfills there's a huge there's a there's a rubbish pile the size of texas in the middle of the ocean that's filled up with plastic toothbrushes plastic bottles so it's about the planet there's a number of different companies that do this really well. Finisterre, a, an example of a company, a small company in based in Cornwall, they build, make products that are, that are recycled plastic. And it's about thinking about the world, and this is becoming more and more important with your for your customer and your consumer. And it's about yeah, 
being a company that does good rather than become a company doing bad. So that's that's been the 10 P's of business. So.